<laughs> YouTube. Hi, how you going? It's Iski here. Um, hey, listen, I uh, thought I'd pull the camera out and mess around with the dryer. I've got a few dryers here that I need to get fixed up. I was just looking at my um, statistics on my my um, YouTube account. It's just a brand new account and um, it seems that the most viewed video that I have is a Simpson belt replacement video. Um, but the thing is, it's not actually, I'm pretty sure people are going to look at that video um, thinking that it's for one of, say, these, if I can angle down here, it's for one of these dryers replace a belt in one of these dryers or the same dryer one of those dryers um, but it's actually not it's actually me replacing a bungee belt that is in uh, the back of the older style dryer and that's an elastic belt and uh, this basically this belt here you can see this belt they take about 40 seconds to to actually um, replace and it's on the back of the dryer it's a very simple thing so I'm pretty sure yeah people are hoping that it's for one of these more popular dryers even though in my videos I have a lot of videos of me working on these dryers and I'm always taking the belts off and putting you know different belts on um, I don't have a, a, a certain video that is dedicated specifically to change a belt so what I thought today is I would change that and have a you know do a belt replacement on one of these dryers um, you can see I've got this dryer here I have this dryer here I have no idea what's wrong with that one and I have this beautiful kind of uh, six kilogram Simpson newer style dryer there and uh, I'm not sure what's wrong with that but I suspect it would probably be a, um, a capacitor I've actually opened up the open up the door and give it a bit of a spin there's definitely a belt still attached to that so that's all good but what I noticed with this particular one here see this actually needs a new door anyway so I'm gonna replace this door but um listen um, I might actually pull this dryer off first and then I'll show you but basically if I put my hand in there and spin the bowl you can tell that there's no belt on there so the belts come off or it's broken it more to the point it's broken and we will have to replace that so what I might do is set you we'll actually do it here rather than go on my you know front porch I thought we would bring the the dryer there this time just set it up there push it down face first on that cushion and take the back off that way but um just for now listen I'm just gonna set you here I'm gonna go and grab that dryer and carry it down all right Oh, it's got a nice little ding on the side. <coughs> it's not going to mean anything though. I think I got this one from the dump. And I'm pretty sure it's either been pushed by the bulldozer or when they threw it off the, the trailer it's just hit something hard on the side there. But um, I'll give you a quick look. This is a four kilogram Simpson dryer. Now this fix, letting you guys know, is exactly the same process you go through when you're fixing an Electrolux dryer as well as a Westinghouse dryer. Now you can see that dints there it looks nasty but that's actually quite easy you just push that out especially when the back's off that'll be an easy thing to to fix and uh but listen let me open that up and if i grab my hand and just go <laughs> see that it just keeps going so there's no friction the belts definitely come off that so we will try we'll, we'll open it up and see what's going on <clears throat> now just to let you guys know as well when you're doing this type of fix, normally belts don't just come off for any reason. They don't just snap for any reason. Uh, normally what happens is there is an idler inside and most of the time it's the idler, the idler that perishes. And because the belt's going around the idler, um, you get these big chunks go off. I'll show you, this is an idler here. This is a, that's not the right belt. So I've got my spare belt here. But these here are idlers. This is an idler out of another um, original Simpson. And it's these things that break normally. They get these big cracks 
and uh, they just perish and what happens is when the belt goes around there the belt basically starts fraying and then the belt will eventually snap but these are the things you, you really if you're going to do this fix you probably should uh, get one of these in advance um, but uh, anyway what I would do is actually open it up first and check this out first there's always a possibility that the belts just snapped but it's always possible that it's come off but I don't think I've ever had a dryer out of the hundreds that I've done where the belt has just come off and uh, yeah by itself and it just needed to be put back on it's always come off for a reason it will snap before it will just come off but um yeah these things you can't now these things these idlers uh, listen I get I get all mine out of machines that have busted computers or that have been pushed up by the bulldozer and uh, yeah you can get these out these are pretty these are really handy but I think listen I actually bought one from eBay a little while ago that's you can buy them from eBay I think they're about 20 bucks or sixteen dollars that's them there I've never used them I've never used this one to be honest I don't like it I think it's I think it's oh, compared to this um, to the original I just think it just feels cheap but um I guess it's you know they're selling thousands of them so it should work okay but um, listen, when you're putting this one, if you're going to replace an idler in one of these machines with one of these ones from eBay, make sure you put this side here down first and not this part here where, the, um, where that cylindrical bit of metal is actually pushed down about a millimetre past that plastic. I definitely put this one, push that one down towards the motor first and have this side up. The same with this one here this is the original this particular side here with this I don't know this kind of washer it's like graphite or something put that going down first but um we will probably have to do that in this fix now but um yeah I just thought I'd show you those things we've got our belt out of another dryer you can also buy those belts on eBay I think they're about 15 or 16 oh, I'm not sure <laughs> I've never really bought one I've always but I know that's where most people would buy them on eBay okay so what I'm gonna do I have to find somewhere to set you down let's see if we can put you on one of these water drums eh? just put you there <coughs> excuse me now I'm just going to lie you Brace first down, pick you up again. Just going to move this cord out of the way. Now, the first thing we are going to do when replacing a belt in a dryer is you can see here it's got these perimeter screws all the way around. And it looks like my gimbal's acting up a little bit. Let me just try and get you back. There we go. So, we want to undo these perimeter screws. And then we want to undo these shroud screws. Now, <laughs> I've heard a lot of people saying that they use uh, uh, basically just shifters to do that. Now, just letting you know that will take you a very long time with the shifter. You're probably better off going to Bunnings. And uh, here, let's have a look what I use. I'll show you what I use. I use this, it's a quarter inch hex bit. So that's exactly what I use. It takes me less than a second to take each screw off and believe me, it's worth the four or five dollars that that will cost. We also need to come and remove that Phillips head. And uh, yeah, listen, let's do that first. I'm just gonna set you up here now and angle you down. This gimbal is playing up. I mean, it's kind of rocking everywhere. I'm not sure what it is, but um, it's, pretty hot today it's very hot so I wonder if um that could be acting up because of the heat all right so what are you seeing you seeing all this yep so let's start by taking now that one's going to be a problem I'll get back to this one because this has this has the dent in the side it's, um, you guys aren't going to have any problems taking taking these off I'm going to come back to that one it's because they've kind of been pushed in um, just misshapen this back here 
and the lip is just hanging over the top of the um, screw so I'm getting having a real difficult time getting the, the bit to go over the head of the screw. Okay, let's take this shroud off first, the back cover. Look at all that dust. Look at that. It's terrible. Wow, have to clean that down before we put it back together. Makes you wonder what's going to be inside this machine when we actually pull it apart. All right, now how am I going to get to this? Um, there's one here and one here that I'm having trouble getting with the head of my, my bit over. Let's just grab a flat blade and I'm just going to see if I can wedge that out. Don't worry, you guys won't have this problem. And in fact, I might even pause you here while I do this. Let's see if I've got this one. Alright, that's the first one. One more. In fact, I come across this issue a lot. See if I can get over the top of that. There we go. I'm not going to pause the video, that was pretty quick. But I just dropped that screw. <sighs> okay, so just grab yourself a Phillips head and just take this screw out here. This is just holding the um the power cord in. We'll set this aside as well. Now I'll give you a quick look. Gee, there's a lot of dust on there. I wonder what inside's going to be like. Look at all the dust around the um, the bearing there. All right. So we need, we just need a shifter. That'll do us. We're going to take that off. Now, underneath that nut, there is one, one washer there, and then there's a lock wash between the nut and that washer. Okay, but before we do that, let's just let's just grab this driver and take this off. See what this is going to be like. Think there's going to be any crap under here? Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's actually quite common. Okay, come back to me, gimbal. Come back to me. There we go. So I'm just going to set you back here again. Angle you down. And I am, oh, actually, see if I can do it here. Can I just set you up there? Oh, that's better, it's closer. Okay. You just open this up a bit. Just put your hand here to stop this bowl from turning. There we go. So that's one nut, one lock washer and one normal washer. All right. Next, next, next. What we're going to do now is just lift this up. Let me just set you back. It's probably going to be easier if you see this from a distance, actually. What we're going to do is just lift this up so this, you know, this um, pin that's coming through the, the bearing here clears that. So lift that up like that. And you'll see here, it's a bit stiff here. That's because this, can you see what I'm doing? That is because this um, exhaust pipe is actually plugged into exhaust pipe in the machine itself. So this exhaust pipe here is connected to the back plate and then the, the other part that it's connected to is inside there. So it's, it's basically just a pipe over a pipe and it's just not a nice snug fit. But if we pull it, give it a good tug, there we go, it's actually frees itself. So there, okay, so next is this power cord. What we're going to do is just slide that off like that. And the next part is very simple as well. We just lift it up. Can you see that plug there? Now I can't do that. I have to unplug that. There's actually a tab there just on top, just there that we push in and pull this top part out and that disconnects it. But I can't do that while holding you guys, so I might just set you back up here and quickly do that. All right, there we go. 
that's disconnected now and that's that pipe I was telling you about and uh, we'll just set that we'll put that somewhere we'll put that here all right let's have a look where's the belt can't even see the belt can't even see the belt where's the belt gone could that be it in the corner down there right down there let's pull that up oh look at that it's completely snapped it has snapped this belt all right we'll just drop you drop you down there it's um oops we got you in portrait mode let's get you back to <laughs> now so listen what i'm going to have to do first is first of all i am actually going to pull that drum out um, and just have a poke around so I'll put you back here because once that drums out I can actually I'll try and push this dint out but listen that's actually normally this would just pull up but because because this machine is had got a dint on the side it's actually preventing that so I'm just gonna there we go that dints almost out <coughs> okay Gonna give this a bit of a bang while I'm here. I think that's fixed that problem. Let's do this side. Okay, time to have a look at this idler. Now, without the drum inside, that's what it looks like. It's pretty barren. I'm just gonna put set you up on top of this door. Let's have a look at this idler. That's where the idler goes. Now, just from me inspecting it from here, this idler looks really good. This idler looks very good. You guys seeing that? <sighs> like, it doesn't seem like there's any chunks. It's definitely, the belt didn't snap because of the idler. The belt probably snapped because it, I don't know, maybe it was just a crap belt from the, um, from you know when they put it together but um that can happen but uh this idler looks clean you're not even seeing it i'm not even showing you there we go that idler looks very very nice so guys i think i'm going to keep this one i am just going to stick that back on there remember what i said with this bit here face down that just goes straight back down there like that but uh, what I am going to do is if you have a good look around this dryer, it's pretty, pretty dirty. So I might quickly just go and grab my um, uh, vacuum cleaner and brush. Maybe I'll just do it by hand. Um, I don't know if I'll bother you guys with me cleaning that. But um, yeah, listen, I'm just going to give that a good clean and I'll bring you back as soon as that's done. And we'll stick another belt on here, okay? All right back that'll do it that's clean enough listen i used to actually pull out a rag and a vacuum cleaner and just go nuts on this thing but um seriously <laughs> as soon as you um you, you you know you do your first half a dozen dryers it's you always have that kind of um film <laughs> on your dryer inside so i wouldn't go too crazy but uh yeah the the um that uh idler looks good um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to pick up that drum over there and just plop, pop it back in. I'll give you a quick look. Just clean that off. Can you guys, what are you guys seeing? I can't see. Hang on, excuse me. There we go. Now you can see here this front has this lip this lip here now that goes into the door just around the door you'll actually work it out you can actually just see here down the bottom here that lip basically slides in between this bit here so we just want to pop that drum back in there we go Make sure it's sitting properly. And just give it a couple of turns with your hand. 
while I am here, I'm just going to tweak the edge where it's been dinted just to make it easier for when we put that back back on. Probably should have done this without the, the drum actually. I'll just pull that back out. Looks better. Almost looks like a new one. Get that back in there. Okay, now next, let's come and grab our belt here. Now this is a used belt out of another machine. Nothing wrong with that as long as it doesn't have any any burrs or cracks or anything and this feels really good what I like to do is actually just hold my hand there and just slide it through through my hand so I can feel anything that shouldn't be out of place and that feels really good okay now we are going to put this belt back on this dryer now first of all you can see that idler I'll give you a good look so that idler is there now the, what we have to do is can you see this spring here that spring has to be released because that's actually putting that's that the oh there we go I think I might have to hang on let me just oh, I don't know what's going on with this gimbal I might have to redo this video but um, see that spring that spring needs to be released let me see if I can actually, I think the angle of this gimbal might be too too drastic. So that basically, if we come down. Okay, so see I've actually, oh, there we go again. Sorry guys, we have that spring. Now because I've taken that spring off, that actually should, means that I can actually push this motor back like that. See, it can get pushed forward or pushed back forward or back oh come on so I don't know if this is gonna this might be a pretty difficult thing to film because this camera gimbal is playing up I'm not sure why it's playing up I have a feeling it normally does it when it's really hot what I might do is see if I can turn this on a different angle can you guys see what I'm doing there uh, slightly There we go. All right, that might be better. Now, yeah, so this motor can now move. See how I'm moving it, rocking it back and forth? So the whole idea is to put this belt on, get it around here, and then pull it, pull it tight so it takes the tension up, and that's where that spring comes in handy, and you, spring, you, you lock it back down. So what I'm gonna do, hopefully you guys can see, that I'll just put the spring there. Just see if I can get you guys better angle there let's just move you around there that's better okay so what I'm going to do obviously with these belts you can see one side has these kind of <coughs> ridges teeth that will actually um, go around you can actually feel this pin of the of the motor axle <laughs> I call it an axle I forget what they call it they call rotors or something I'm not sure I'll have to double check all of that but yeah um, basically that goes around that way so there you've got your belt and these ridges are inside okay basically against the drum all right so first thing you do this is very simple by the way I might be I'm probably making it look a lot more difficult than it is because of this dodgy gimbal but normally you can do this fix in I'd say oh I don't know maybe 20 minutes 15 minutes now if you guys have a good look, can you see on the drum there? You can actually see, I can't, I'm holding this and I'm trying to show you. You can actually see there's like the dust that's on the bowl itself. You can actually see where the belt, the old belt was. Um, so basically you just want to drop this down to about there because that's where the, can you see that dust mark there? Yeah, you basically just want to drop it around that, that, 
that spot. Let me just try and put you back here while holding this belt. I think you can see what I'm doing. Let's start that part again. All right, so we want to throw that belt over. We want it to kind of marry up slightly to where the, um, that dust mark where the old belt used to be on the, um, on the drum there. And then we just want to drop it in front of the idler around that axle or the pin of the motor. Here, see if I can show you a close up view. Can you see that? That's basically how you want it. It's that simple. There's a bit more to it though, so let me just set you back up. Now, once that's like that, what you want to do is you want to grab your spring and the hole that you pulled the spring out of, this one here, you basically hook it back into the spring and then you pull this forward so it's actually pulling the motor, pulling this motor and the idler forward. It's taking up the tension and then you hook it back down to the floor. And by the way, take photos of this before you actually pull everything apart. I always do that. So just take some photos and you should be golden. Now, I just go around to the back of the machine and I'm just looking at that dust mark where the old belt used to live. I'm just kind of getting it basically on that dust mark. Now this part is very important. You want to put your hands on the, the drum here and you want to turn it. You just want to turn it a few times. And what that does is it just kind of seats because the the idler is able to move up and down on that kind of that pin that it's stuck on it moves freely up and down so it's basically just it's just you know positioning itself nicely and that looks pretty good but remember these these dryers they actually stop and they will go in the other direction so we want to do the other direction as well and automatically you actually see the belt start to rise and it's still working, it's still going good. So I'm actually quite happy with that. This belt feels quite stiff actually. I'll give you a quick look. There we go. And what we are going to do, hang on a second. She, in fact, let me just mess around with this gimbal. I think, nope, I thought I could actually hold that. So yeah, what I'm gonna be doing now is basically grabbing my spring, pulling this forward to take that tension up popping the spring over this and bringing it down to the floor. Can you see that? That's better. All right, let me just set you back there. like I was doing before I'll just make sure that that belt is in the in the dust mark of the drum from where the old belt was like that and I will put my hands here just make sure the belts maybe halfway in the middle of these teeth on the, the motor and I'll just give it a nice actually that's moving so much nicer now that it's not so thick there we go that's beautiful It's actually moved up a bit on this idler, so what I'm going to do is actually move the belt up on the actual axle of the motor. There we go. That looks good. Now we want to go the other way. And that looks good. 
I'll let you do this a few times. My hair's in the way. <clears throat> Alright, we'll go the other way. Yeah, that's good. So that's basically the, the belt has been replaced then. So what I do next, um, <laughs> I actually think what I will do next is actually go and grab a brush and brush that uh, the back of that machine down because it was pretty ugly. So one moment guys, I'll be back in a second. Okay, I just got myself a little dustpan brush because what I'm going to do now is actually just, you can see the back of this, hang on a second, let me just get you around, see the back of this um, dryer, oh, the inside back of the dryer is just really dirty and dusty, so I'm just going to, just you can see this felt bit of um, um, whatever you call it, ah. Uh, it's like some, whoever had this dry before had a dog. <laughs> this is dog hair there. But yeah, we'll just clean that down. These vents, just give it a good brush. It's probably a good time to actually have a look at the, the element, the, the heater here, and just, just give that a good brush. Because you always get dust in the element. Now, just to let you know, guys know, the amount of people who throw out machines because they've just smelt burning, it's just a bit of dust. It's just a bit of dust that's got on the element. Like, to be honest, I've never ever heard of a dryer. Well, I'm sure it's happened, but I've never heard of a dryer or seen a dryer catch on fire. But it's just a bit of dust that gets in there. People smell it and they think, oh no, it's just burning inside, let's throw it out. It's not the case just let it get past that and you should be right just monitor the situation now look at that that's pretty that's pretty dusty as well can you guys still see that so I'm just gonna give that a good clean put you up here this time there we go yeah I've never said that to anyone but yeah it's that burning that I get people giving me dryers all the time they come to buy a dryer off me and they say, oh, it's going to catch on fire, I can smell it burning, and I just open it, and there's nothing wrong. It's, it's just a little bit of dust that's hit the, um, the element. The element gets hot, and you just, um, it just burns it away, and people smell that burning and just think it's, a, it's dodgy and it needs to be replaced. Most of the time, like 99% of the time, it doesn't. I would just let it do its thing, just keep an eye on it, and uh, it'll go away. But um, yeah, repairmen love that. <laughs> Honestly, they do, they love it. I don't class myself as a repairman. I make women's corsetry for a living, believe it or not. This is just a, a sideline kind of thing that I do. But yeah, the amount of guys that fix these things that have told me not to even do these videos, it's disgusting. All right, so that's, oh, there's a bit of dirt, dust underneath there. Okay, looking good. All right, people, let's put this back, back on. Let's just put you there, angle you down. All right, so, oh, listen, what I should do as well, can you, how much of that are you seeing? I'll just um, clean out this this exhaust pipe a little bit it's not much in there but may as well <sighs> okay so listen what I do is I like to 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 marry up this um, exhaust ducting to the exhaust ducting on the inside let that drop down actually no first of all what you want to do is actually go inside grab that plug and plug it back into the, the heating element remember and then you want to grab this power cord and slide that back on there like that and then you want to marry this ducting onto the ducting that's inside just like that now then all you do is I just lift this up a little bit and I push the the drum forward so that 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 pin on the drum is goes straight through the bearing 
But listen, before I even do that, what I might do, I forgot to do this, I like to actually get my finger and put it on the bearing and just move it around and make sure the bearing's moving nicely and freely. This bearing feels really good. Like I can even spin it like that and it spins. But yeah, if it feels crunchy or it doesn't turn when you're kind of moving it, replace it. Definitely replace it. But that feels good. Push that over the top and I just line this back up. We'll see how good this goes back together seeing I pull that dent out. What I might do just quickly is sink a few screws into this side that you're looking at first. In fact, what I normally do is just put a screw in in each corner, one here, one here, one here, one here, put it on its you know, on the bottom, turn it on and make sure that it's spinning okay. But because this particular dryer had a dent in it, and it's actually a bit of a hassle because of that dent, and we have to line these holes up. I don't know if I'm going to bother. That's looking good. Actually, I will bother because we've got it. So what I'm going to do, now that I've got a few screws in each corner, is I am going to put this back up. Okay, let me see, what are you seeing? Let's put you over here now. We'll sit you back here, angle you up. Just gonna slide that around. quite difficult to do all of this on a driveway that's very steep. I'll just grab myself an extension lead. Hopefully this works because um, I think it's got a broken wire in it but we should be right. There we go. There we go, it's working. No it's not because the extension lead, there we go. Awesome. Now normally You'd actually have to, you know, push this switch in so that this drum started working, but it was already pushed in. But uh, that looks good, eh? Hang on, let's go and have a quick look. You can see that's spinning beautifully now. So, what I'm going to do very quickly, let's actually wait until it stops and go in the other direction before we do anything, because that's always a good thing to do. while we're waiting. See, I can smell a little bit of burning now. I can smell some burning, and that's because I was just cleaning that element. Here we go, hang on. Awesome, so it's going in the opposite direction and the belt's staying on very nicely. We will be testing this with a couple of full loads of washing, by the way. But um, yeah, you can see on the side here where that big dent was, there's still a slight dent there, and I'll touch that up. I'll give that a bit of a spray. But um, we saved another one. That one's got a slight dent in the side. But other than that, it's great. But yeah, I can, I can smell, you know, a, a bit of a burning smell. And that's because I was cleaning around the element and there's probably a bit of dust burning up on the element. But uh, a lot of people, they smell that if a little bit of dust falls on the element and they just freak out. They think that, you know, the dryer is going to die. It's burning inside. It, it's not. In fact, yeah, I very rarely ever see, you do see big build-ups of dust on elements. I'll, I will tell you now, some people, I don't know how they, what they do with their dryers. Maybe they run them for a while without having the actual filter in there, maybe. But sometimes you do open it up and there's these big clumps of dust in the element itself. You know, I just pull the, the dust out, but, you know, they, they will, they'll burn away, but, um, yeah, they're special cases. So if you don't look after your dryer, if you're running your dryer without a filter, or if the filter's got some big gashes in it or holes in it, you'll definitely get a big build-up of dust 
in the filter, in the, in the element itself, and you'll probably always smell the kind of um, burning smell, but honestly, I, I've never really come across a dryer that's ever caught on fire, or I've never even heard of a dryer catching on fire. I'm sure there are people out there that have heard of that. Uh, there we go. But I'm just gonna go and grab a door now and replace that door because that door's a bit stuffed and I will test this out. So there you go guys, that's how you replace a belt. I'll probably redo this video, I'll do another video because this was just a real quick dodgy fix because you know, it was on the driveway. Um, normally I do the fix on my front porch like all my other dryer video fixes, but um, it's completely full at the moment. Full of dryers because I've been fixing these things but I just couldn't be bothered selling them at the moment. Uh, but uh, we're in a new year now, so I have to pull my finger out and do some stuff. But uh, there you go. That's how you replace a belt on a Simpson dryer, an Electrolux dryer, and a Westinghouse dryer. Thanks for watching. All right, so that uh, door that I pulled out, it's perfect, but it's slightly off-white. You can go in the trash. And of course, we don't want to forget to put the back
screws on. Now, let's give, give this bit of a clean. Whoa, look at that. Well, that really sucks. Looks like I dropped my gimbal. It's a very expensive gimbal. And uh, it's not working anymore. So, damn. Let's see if we can fix it. If not, I'll have to buy another one. Actually, I almost forgot to put the The nut and washers back on the the bearing. That gimbal, I think that gimbal cost me about um, $175. And it's lasted me maybe three months. Great. There we go. Fixed. Oh, damn it. I have to get a new gimbal now. Oh well. Like, comment, subscribe, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.